What's up, guys? Kel Charles and Megan Murray here, and you are listening slash watching to, or watching to, that's works, that's fine, uh, Girls Talking Boys in partnership with SB Nation, as always. Hello. Hello. It is Monday, and we haven't lost yet, so I'm feeling great. <laughs> I don't really know what day it is because it's been a second consecutive Sunday without college, or I'm sorry, without Cowboys football. And I can't even speak right, let alone like form a thought about the football team because I'm just so thrown off by it. But we have football tomorrow, so bless up for that. But we also have a very special guest because things are so tipsy-turvy. We are bringing Fan Fridays to Monday. We have with us the, as Meg said, elite Cowboys fan, our dear friend, and Meg's dearest friend, Travis Walker, joining us. Travis, welcome to Hello. TV. Loving I'm the glad fit. Glad to be here. <laughs> For sure. I always got to rep my Cowboys uh, wearing Dak today. Um, Sad I, story I about a, uh, the Dak jersey sure. is that we both got Dak jerseys, and then uh, a week later, Dak got injured. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Literally the day I wore it. So. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Better times are coming. <laughs> yeah, yes, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. It's okay. We we won't burn them yet because like I'm very superstitious, but like I feel like 2020 is more to blame than you guys. So that's really oh, what I agree for with sure. That. Yeah, one hundred percent. I refuse to take any blame. Um. So guys, <laughs> fun fact about Travis. Uh, we'll give like some history and we'll get the details on how he became a fan and all that, but. He's actually calling in. Um, he lives in my, this is like the twisted web of just the small <laughs> worlds of all time. And I love them so much. So obviously you guys know Meg and I are super close and Meg's from Dallas and she and Travis obviously are, have, are the Dallas connection, right? So like Travis is from here too, but Travis now lives in my hometown where he's calling in <laughs> from now in Overland Park, Kansas. And like my mind is blown and it's just, I love the 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 twisted webs that we lead that we lead lead. For sure. Well, I need coffee today. It is just one of those. Things. <laughs> <laughs> it's I don't know. It's pretty fun. We we're just we we're just talking about it, and I mean, I literally used to live in the same area you did. We just wow. years apart. It's so weird. Didn't cross paths until now. You know, you're I, welcome. Yeah, I was gonna say like this is what Megan Murray does. Like she just like brings people together. So. She is the glue. For sure. <laughs> she is the glue. Um, so exactly. Travis, tell us kind of like how you became, I mean, obviously you live in Kansas City now, but about your, you know, Cowboys fandom, because you're a massive fan, you and Meg both, and you were just kind of alluding to it, but like, tell us that story and kind of how that came to be. You know, I would say that uh, it definitely started young, but young enough for me to probably remember it around eight years old. Why I say eight is because I actually remember Troy Eggman's house was on fire and it was a, he used to live down the street from my um, elementary school. <laughs> and so not, not really understanding football at that young age. I mean, you obviously played it, but don't understand it. But then you hear a big name. Oh, you know, Cowboys star house is on fire. That's when I started to pay attention to football. And that's when I started to pay attention to the Cowboys. Oh my gosh. What's your, uh, your passion for the Cowboys uh, was just Oh, burned. it started, it's, it's literally the Elmo fire. Just <laughs> 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 that's where, that's where it started. <laughs> Meg, uh, I heard your pun. You're, you're, <laughs> you're going to play the um, hey, it, tur it turned out fine. So, you know. I was going to say. Wait, so his house was okay? Because obviously I didn't grow up. Yeah, there. yeah, it's so. a, it's a, it was it was definitely okay. I mean, a few you know million dollar house was kind of burnt down, but that's kind of where it started. And what's funny is I have a whole bunch of pictures from, you know, when I was younger. Don't remember because I'm you know it's just not an age that you really remember. But I'm sitting on Tony Dorsett's uh, motorcycle, taking a picture with him. I'm in the locker room with my sister um, uh, in Michael Irvin's locker in Valley Ranch. Uh, it's just so many different memories that I can't forget. I will say there's a memory. Um, Emmett Smith beats the rushing record versus Seahawks. I was at that game. He gets the rushing record. Two plays later, he loses it. <laughs> and then another, then another play later, he gets it back. So there's some one. things I like definitely remember for sure. I was going to say, 
Um, I, your, your point about Valley Ranch, we were talking before we started recording and like how weird it is because you come back and you visit and Valley Ranch is no longer there anymore. And that's something that I did this quarantine. David Hellman and I drove out randomly one day because that's what you do in quarantine. You're bored. I don't know what, what we were doing and why you weren't with us. I don't know, whatever. Either way, we drove out to Valley Ranch and there's absolutely nothing there anymore. And it was just the weirdest thing ever to like, you know, I mean, cause even when I worked there, you think about all of like the storied history and like the people that walk through those halls, you know? And like, I think deep down inside, I always thought that maybe they were gonna just keep it and maybe turn it into a museum or like maybe the XFL would rent it out or something. Or like there was even rumors about it being a school, but like it is demolished and it is literally going to be a new like housing community. And it's just, it, it kind of made me sad. It kind of made me sad. I have to be honest with you. That's the way Dallas goes these days. Everything gets turned to dirt and then townhomes go on top of it. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it was, a, and like you drive through and the neighborhood in Valley Ranch where Valley Ranch was, the facility, it has names of like players that are still there. So it's like, you there's still like some semblance of you can tell what used to be here because of like, you know, the hints if you pay close enough attention. But it makes me sad that a couple years from now, maybe someone will drive through and they won't even know what was there. Like that's wild to me. Although the White House is definitely still standing. I confirmed that. So you know what? <laughs> at least there's that, you guys. Like at least we have something sure. left. You know, like something is there. <laughs> I think there needs to be like an annual party at the White House for now on. Yeah. <laughs> I, we gotta yeah, go back. Who needs to have your Christmas party at the at the stadium? Do it at the White House. hundred percent. Like where it's meant to be. Right. Urban needs to draft parties, house. White House. Yes. <laughs> it's brilliant. Like in the driveway, like we don't need it in the plaza. We need it in the driveway, like of the White House. Like that's what we're gonna do. That's wow. Yeah. You know what? I love that idea. And I just whoever owns that house, surely they know what that house used to be. Like surely they do. Hope so. You would hope. Oh, there's there's definitely memories in that house that aren't going away. Yeah, those I mean, stains last forever. You know. <laughs> 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 so as a fan, Travis, I mean you been around and been following the team for a really long time you know since you know you were eight I guess and and there's definitely been some ups and downs but I feel like this season takes the cake what has it been like for you and what's been like your your thoughts but what your I'd love to even get your thoughts on like where you thought this team was going to go at the beginning of the season versus where they actually ended up going and then just like how you've been coping because as someone who I, I look at like you and Meg, and for me, I didn't grow up a Cowboys fan, but I can imagine this has been really painful for you. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> Go, going into this season, it was Super Bowl or bust, 40 uh, you know, points a game, 50 points a game, 40 burger all the way. And then it's just day by day, game by game, there's an injury or there is a loss and you're just like, 40 burgers now is, that's what the defense is giving up and that now the offense is putting up you know um and how I cope I don't think there's enough alcohol in the world to cope there's <laughs> <laughs> uh, whiskey on the you know, I, I I definitely I definitely go into the games you know hoping for a win I don't ever want to lose I'm not that tank for unless it's Jamar Chase from LSU I'll take oh. any tiger um okay you know, I always add to the offense, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I expect to win every single game, whether we have another eight and eight season that, you know, that we're always used to. Um, but yeah, this one, this one is just rough. This for one, 2020 reason, and the in Cowboys is just rough. For some reason, I can't help myself every time. Like I, I tell myself every week, I can even come on here and say, we're not going to win this game. Like, mm not gonna happen we're we're trash and then the second I see them on the field I'm like let's go guys like you could do it yep <laughs> yep and then I get the, the, upset every time something goes wrong the moment that I see Zeke 
walk on the field and spit out water, I'm like, we're winning by 30 at least. <laughs> he can do, he he can do it. He can do it when we're down 30, and I still think we're gonna come back and win every time he spits out water. Like that's that's the type of expectations I have on this team. Yeah, like I can say whatever I want, and I can probably be like more accurate any other day. But game day, you can't tell me nothing. Like no, none. No. What are your thoughts on Zeke though? Because I think just you know. That's been a really hot topic of conversation this year. And it's really unfortunate because I think we obviously love him and love him as a player, love him, just like the energy he brings to this team. Um, But he's now, you know, we paid him in the off season and you paid Amari and he didn't pay Dak and you paid Jalen. And he kind of has been one of those players that has been in the conversation of, wow, these are guys we paid and whether it's fair or not, he's seemingly not performing up to the amount that he's getting paid is what the narrative is. He's leading the league in his position and fumbles. I believe he has six or maybe it's seven now after last game, but it's just really not the caliber of play you expect from him. Are you concerned about that from your, one of your star players or do you just feel like 2020 is a fluke? Uh, I don't blame anything on any player on this team to be, to be real with you. I mean, Zeke can go into this game and fumble six more times. I'm still going to blame him on 2020. I just think the mental state (laughs) of every single Cowboy is just not there. I mean, you lose a a, a player and a best friend in Dak. You literally lose your whole line, it seems like. Um, Yeah. You you kind of have on and offs on on defense. Sometimes I don't even know who's even on the field, to be honest with you. Like, yeah. I think I know who that number is. <laughs> um, so I, I, I would blame it all on, on, on mental in 2020. Like no one's head is actually in the game. I feel like when the game is going on. So when Zeke fumbles, I'm not going to blame it on contract. But 2021, if he fumbles, that's going to be a different conversation. Then Travis is coming after you, Zeke. <laughs> but let me ask you this. Like if you playing devil's advocate and again like I preface all of this and saying like I love Zeke and I still believe in Zeke and I think like it's really difficult but like I think that once you get that check and the level that he is getting paid at to perform at a certain you know caliber and he's simply not don't you would you say it's fair to expect your your key players to perform at a high level even despite all of the other nonsense and all of the extra noise like is that really is it a is it an excuse? Uh, I wouldn't say it's an excuse. I mean, you always expect your players to be to play at a high level, whether you're getting the practice money or if you're getting the highest paid player on the team. Um, to me, contracts don't really play that, it, just in my mind. Contracts don't play that role for you um, to be better than, you know, the bottom player. I just feel like you're all, every team player has to be, you know, playing at that high level. Yeah. Do we want Zeke to be playing better than everyone? Oh, for sure. But sometimes it's just, you know, it's just that season. There's a lot of big time players that have been played, have been, have been paid, but have never panned out, you know, just that year, but come back and turn it around the next two or three years. Yeah. Because we're, we're only seeing one bad season out of Zeke. So we can't blame him for one bad season after, you know, a one big check. Isn't it like, the, the, I just love that in the NFL, I was, it's just, we are so prescriptive in how we analyze players and games. Like we, we, if you think about it, like taking a step back, we competed in the Pittsburgh Steelers game. And then we like competed in the Minnesota, Minnesota game. And we're like, we're back baby. You know, like, or <laughs> like, sure. <laughs> or like Zeke has a rough season. And then we're like, he's not even like, you know, Kareem Hunt is better than, <laughs> than not that I mean, Kareem Hunt's obviously right. like, you know what I mean? Like, there's like, we're, we're like, he's not even the same conversation as Saquon. And it's just, it's like, it's, it's incredible. Like how quickly like the pendulum swings in these. For sure. I had someone literally tell me that he hasn't been good. I was like, okay, I know like he's having a bad season, but he hasn't been good. He hasn't been one of the most successful running backs in this league. Yeah. Like the Cowboys have played, the Cowboys have played 10 games you interview those 10 defensive coaches, they say one thing. We're playing, we're practicing against Zeke. Doesn't matter if you're zero and zero or three and seven. Every coach has said we're practicing for Zeke because you never know when he's going to go off. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I had that same person say, well, Tony Pollard's just doing so much better than him. And I'm like, well, wouldn't you want to attack Zeke and stuff Zeke? And then that gives Tony Pollard a little. For sure. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of Zeke hate going on right now. And I just feel like everyone is forgetting how good of a running back he is. I totally Now know. I need to go put on my Zeke jersey. I was yeah. going to say, I was like, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to start that. taking him off and I have a jersey every <laughs> single time. Speaking of slander, speaking of slander, let's talk about this some further, about the guy that you're actually wearing. So, you know, there's, we're recording this on Sunday in the middle of the Eagles game. So um, Carson Wentz is playing Aaron Rodgers and Tony Romo is calling the game. And I had an Eagles person text me, one of my friends, um, not one of our friends, but uh, he was like, I think it's pretty funny that Tony Romo is calling this game between um, Wentz and Rodgers. And I was like, I don't think anything's funny, so go away. But either way, um, there's been a lot of conversation around Wentz and his performance this year. We talk about Zeke leading the league in fumbles. Well, Carson Wentz is leading the league in turnovers. And he has more turnovers individually than most teams. So it's pretty wild to see that go down. What do you feel like concretely you can definitively say Dak Prescott, like we got to lay this narrative or this argument to rest. Like Dak is better than Dak over Wentz. Is this, is this where you stand? Yes, but I don't think this conversation will ever end. Like I think it, it will never end. <laughs> Dak, Dak can win the Dak can win two Super Bowls in a row, and then people will still come out and say that Carson Wentz is better. Hasn't Carson Wentz been the most sacked quarterback also this season? Yes. Is he essentially David Carr of 2020? Oh. Most turnovers, most sacks. I mean, what what good has he done this year? Travis from the top rope. <laughs> I wasn't ready. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> I mean, they're just there's just so many bad plays he makes. And I'm not gonna say that it's the receiver's fault. I'm not gonna say it's a win's fault, but the quarterback will always get the pressure of whose fault it is every single time. And uh if Dak is gonna be in that role, look at numbers, look at play, look at games. Dak has been the better player. You go to the playoffs, Carson wins where you're at. You're on the sideline while your backup's doing the rest. I mean so where are we going? Let me ask you this. We talk about like how like 2020 is affecting players like Zeke, right? And their performance. Do you not feel like you could, if I, and I don't even, I hate standing up for him. I'm, and whenever I criticize a player, I'm criticizing him for his play on the field. He sounds like he's a lovely man for the record. Okay. Um, I don't like the Eagles, but like, obviously I don't want to slander him as a human being um, unless you just do something horrible and then I'll come for you. But I like, could you not apply that same logic to Wentz when you talk about like 2020 just being like, like they've been decimated and you're playing in a pandemic and like, you know, you could talk about all this stuff. Like, can you not say the same? 2020 only affects the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah. It's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the plays that are bad, it only affects the Cowboys. <laughs> this is just an Eagles team that we knew was the yeah. Eagles. We always knew the Eagles were going to be bad at some point, and this is the time. They don't well, have Nick Foles to back them up. Either, so, 2019 no. isn't an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're right. What about, like, Dak's return, though? Because, like, I, I, you know, went on Twitter one night, and I saw this. I don't even know yeah. who they were playing. Like, maybe, like, last week, I think it was. And Carson Wentz just made, like, this. Oh, my gosh. I was like, I was like can we lay this narrative to rest? But then someone started tweeting me and they're like, and they're like, yeah, Dak may be better than, than Wentz right now, but like, how sure are you that Dak's going to come back and recover and be able to perform at the level where he still is consistently better than Wentz? Are you worried about that at all? I mean, there was a video that came out this week with Dak up at the star at the facility and he, you know, was kind of messing around and got off his crutch for a minute. It was like showing like, Hey guys, like I can kind of walk like when he was with Zeke. Are you, do you, are you worried about his progress and where he can pick back up on how far he came already in his development as a QB? I do not because you can go back on a story of T uh, Teddy Bridgewater, mm. the guy who, I mean, almost, and even Alex Smith, uh, two guys who tore up their legs really bad and two different injuries. Um, but we have to remember, we don't have the bodies of NFL athletes. Yeah. Um, we don't have the doctors that they go through. 
I think Dak will come, if not better than he was uh, when he first came in the league, when he dominated. Like that's that's a season I'm expecting in 2021. Comeback player yes. MVP style. Let's Whether he go. wins those accolades, that's what I'm expecting out of him. That's what I think he'll get. Um, I think, I think you're right. I, yeah. Like, I feel like I, I got also heard the comparison. Well, RG3 uh, has never been the same. And, like, I just don't think you can really compare the two of them. Yeah. I mean. No. Yeah. And RG3 it has really never been put in a position to, to come back and play for a starting team, right. you know? Yeah. yeah. So those are two stories I don't think I could compare. But I would like to compare Dak to his story of Alex Smith playing now and Teddy Bridgewater playing now. Those, that's the kind of comeback I'm wanting out of him. All right. So talking to, speaking of comebacks, um, there's a lot of players, unfortunately, that are coming back from the COVID reserve list from the Ravens. And unfortunately, <laughs> in perfect timing to play the freaking Cowboys. Like, come on. <laughs> Josie's like, you have COVID for one more week. Gosh, like, darn it. <laughs> it's like college threats or something. Like, what do we do? I got I'm not above it at this point, but <laughs> of course, Lamar Jackson is going to play. And I just, I, I, for one, really wanted Trace McSorley just because I love that song. I just, yes, <laughs> but I, I, how, where's your head at going into this Ravens game, especially now knowing that Lamar's there. And then I hear you both may or may not have a prediction for me. So I would love to hear those things. You want me to go first? Go for it. <laughs> Perfect. Ladies. Des, I, I think Des scores a, I think Des go, scores a touchdown. Oh! Um, to be honest, and what's what crazy was b- before before we got on, I actually watched a highlight of him taking a punt return back against the Giants as his first touchdown. So I'm like, I kind of want them to put him at a punt, punt return stage and return one in <laughs> Dallas. I want him. I, I it's good. I think it's gonna be the biggest welcoming back in Dallas. I hope he gets to throw up the X in I the end I want to see him throw up the X so bad. Yeah. But as I say that, Cowboys 21 14. 21 14. Okay. Okay. All right, babe. What's yours? Doable. Um, I think I mean I think we're gonna lose. Um, but I think it will be close. Uh probably to the tune of 24 21 let's go with a uh we just can't get it done <laughs> because i that's how i feel we're gonna be close dalton's gonna be like yeah i know the ravens what's up and then des is gonna score a touchdown we're gonna throw up the x and then we're gonna you know fall apart defensively because you know that's the brand. shambles <laughs> this is the brand this is what happens they do enough to tease us and make us feel a little good for a minute and then they're like mm, no Baltimore just doesn't scare me. I don't know why I say that, but every team we go against, um, if we play the way we against the Steelers, I don't see them taking away, you know, going away with this game. And honestly, like, that's what's funny about it is that the, the two games this team has truly competed in since Dak has been down have been the two, arguably the two hardest teams on our schedule. So, like, mm-hmm. I'm like, well, it only makes sense that we would compete in this game too, because apparently we like to compete. And honestly, this is just part of my like um, superstition is that when I trash them, they play pretty well. So I'm going to continue to do that. (laughs) I'm going to find real sketchy tweets. I might even tag some players. And you know, game time, I'm just going to be like, oh, we're going to win the whole thing. Super Bowl, here we come. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, um, I'm kind of with you guys. I think that I think the Cowboys will actually compete. I'm gonna give them. I'll go. I'll go with you, Travis. I, I like the 21 14. Um, I don't. You know, I I think I would actually love to see Des score a touchdown. I hate that, but I also love it. Like his story is just so awesome, and I feel so happy for him. And so I just I, I think that's. That would be a cool moment, I know, for him. And um, for sure. I think for a lot of Cowboys fans, as bittersweet as it would be, how's that? So um, There's just some Cowboys that will always be a Cowboy, even if they're not anymore. Yes. And he's one. Deion Sanders. Oh, most definitely. Jason Witten. Emmett Smith went to the Cardinals, never happened. 
Yeah. No, that never happened. Jason Witten <laughs> will erase his Raiders uh, fandom or his Raiders jersey whenever he goes in the Hall of Fame because it just is not real. It's not real. Yeah. Didn't happen. It doesn't, it doesn't look as good. No, it doesn't. It's just like, I don't, I no. hate it. Anyways. Um, all right. Well, Travis, do you have any final words for Cowboys Nation heading into this Ravens game? Just because, again, like you're right there with them and it's been rough. Yeah. But type us up. Let's go. Like, give us something to like hold on to as we go into this weird Tuesday game this week. We're going in three and seven. We're leaving four and seven. We will finish the season on a positive note. 2020 can't hold us back. Go Cowboys. <laughs> yes. I can run through a brick wall right now. <laughs> <laughs> Travis, thank you so much for coming to hang out with us. We truly appreciate you. Tell the people where they can find you because honestly, you're a good follow on the Twitter as well. And, um, you know, if you want to be just hanging out with fellow Cowboys fans on the interwebs, he's a good one to hang out with. So what's your oh, handle? Where can they find you? At TWALK6. At T-W-A-L-K-6. All right, everyone. You heard the man. Follow him at T-Walk6 on the Twitter. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Girls Talking Boys. We really do appreciate you all rating, reviewing, and subscribing, giving us all the five stars. It really does mean the world to us. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts, whether it's Spotify, Apple, iTunes, or Stitcher. Also subscribe to us on YouTube as well. Megan, where can they find you on the interwebs then too? At Meg Murray with four R's. And you can follow me at Kelsey underscore Charles. But Megan, um, we may not be playing the Eagles this week, but we are playing a fellow foul. And I feel like these words do also apply. So please leave the good people with a mantra going into this week. I don't know. I feel like my guy could uh, down oh. there could have. Uh, Travis, we you might need you to pinch hit. A, a little, a little Dallas forever, a little Eagles for never. A, a, a little, can, can we get it? Cowboys <laughs> forever, Eagles for never, Baltimore Ravens. Never. Burn. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's not real. <laughs>